for example, you've seen these footballers, right? Like the Ronaldo's, Messi's. How many years they've been playing? They've been playing for 20 years of football and they play around the year. And football is not like, you know, chess, right? Like it's physical, there are injuries. You see these guys ever going down for a year or two, you rarely see them. The reason is in Europe and, and India, I'm sorry, in US, the, the regenerative medicine, all these guys, like Ronaldo's, all these guys have their cells stored. They literally hit these things every off season. Wow. Every off season, you hit these joints, hit these joints. Even our patients, you know, like when we go to Cayman Islands in the US also, we have a lot of our athletes, they come every off season. This is proactive. Damn. That means they're good, but they want to be at that 100% level. Wow. So it's a proactively maintaining it so that the injury does not happen. Uh, so that's because they're elite and that's their life and the teams need them. It's millions of dollars if they don't make it. That's one way of uh, protecting your body and taking care of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about ice baths mm -hmm. being a good practice to do yeah. regularly. Yeah. This is like the ice bath that you take once a year. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, but you know, again, for a non-athlete, I mean, I would say athlete is elite athlete, professional athlete. We don't need to do uh, repetitively, but somebody like them, that's their life. And uh, so that's their career. So, so we got to keep him uh, uh, up to full, full potential. So you're saying the top athletes like LeBron James, mm -hmm. Ronaldo, Messi, these guys have stored their stem cells somewhere in the world and every off season, they'll get their joints injected. Yeah, majority of them. For example, you cannot store in US, as I mentioned. Uh, in Europe, there are a few areas you can store it. You cannot store in India. You cannot do that. So, as I said, even um, in Cayman Islands, we have a facility. There we have a lot of our NFL professional guys. They store um, their cells. So that the advantage of storing the cells versus somebody you getting a procedure. For you, like in India or there is, we have to take the bone marrow, inject on the same day. It's allowed. But I cannot keep your cells. I cannot grow them. I cannot save them. I cannot. That's against the rules, basically. In those countries, you can do it. So the advantage, for example, storing your cells is you have ACL. You do great. You come back like a year later, doc, something happened to me here or like something happened to me here. I don't need to go back and aspirate the marrow again, get the cells again. All you need to do is, hey, when are you coming in? Your cells are already here. So let's get them ready. You just come in, just an inject and go. That's the convenience. And also those countries, you can actually multiply the cells. So instead of doing one joint, they may come and do four or five joints. Wow. It's like a stem cell makeover. Basically, you see that thing. How, how do yeah. you multiply the cells? So you can actually grow the cells in a medium, in a lab, in a cryopreserved state. Like they so, grow like fungus? No, no, no. See, cells, the normal way of cell functioning is like multiplying, right? Each one multiplies gotcha. uh, into. So you just multiply them. So, But you save them in a cryopreservative. And then whenever you're ready, say like you're coming next week, so there's a 10-day period, then you start taking the cells out and then you start feeding them uh, with the necessary and then they start multiplying. Gotcha. So instead of having, um, I'll just give you an example, like say like, oh, I need 25 million cells uh, for one joint, but now I'm doing three joints. What do you do? You just multiply. You take more times to get those to 75 million so you can hit all three joints at one time. But again, we're talking something that's not available in the U.S. or here. But for the purpose, like something like that is so convenient for all these elite athletes. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Which European countries? Which European countries? Um, there are some like uh, in Germany. Um, they can do it. Not the... Um, not the main institutes, but uh, there are under Korea, uh, the people do it. A lot of South American countries, Panama, Cayman Islands, uh, Mexico. So there's a lot of uh, down south below our U.S., a lot of those, because these are really small countries with very, um, you know, easy regulations. So good and bad, right? Good is, yes, you know, responsible guys doing research for 20 years, you know, everything protocol based, showing it to the government, what we're doing and all those benefiting the patients. But 
imagine you lack the rule how do we know who is real hmm. who is doing what who is going to control so there is always uh, a a negative side to it so that's why countries like you know us and india we don't allow that quickly you know, until you can monitor all these activities uh, so uh, these small countries are able to do that you said that these top elite athletes mm -hmm. they might just do the stem cell extraction once mm -hmm. store the cells mm -hmm. allow them to multiply in the facility and then every off season they'll come back and they'll get their joints injected based on where they're feeling a niggle right oh uh, correct yeah yeah that's or, or, or like you know it's most of them have image guidance right like you know we do ultrasounds we do uh, scans and uh, mri scans and we know like what's going on so with the patient you you're able to spot the degeneration in their bodies through scans uh, absolutely because you cannot guess anymore okay. yeah you gotcha. have to look into it and find out what exactly is going on is there yeah. any downside to the stem cell extraction no because as i said there uh, are um, two things right one is it's your own cells so there's no you know th there's no negative side effects number two is it's done as a procedure not as a surgery that means you're doing with a needle so when the needle goes in it goes through the skin so skin becomes a barrier for infection or anything so you go in and you coming back and you closing it yeah. so the infection is not an issue right yeah. there i think the question is coming from the place of why don't these guys just get that extraction done every time versus get it once and stored mm. i'm assuming it's because you'll grow the stem cells also in those facilities yeah so the reason is uh, two things right one you're making multiple visits uh for that rather than you just coming in and going okay. number two, you cannot multiply uh with one extraction so if you already have it and you can multiply as many as you want number three, you're getting old but your cells are not getting old so you still have ah. say like say like you know you gave your cells like when you're 18 20 when you go into your career and then you're 35 you're still playing but again as i said the cell age does not matter but still you have potent uh, cells or if you're going through some kind of a disease now uh, then you can do it at least you have your things wow. just just like we're talking about how an umbilical cord how kids were saving athletes do the same thing Damn. as well yeah yeah okay yeah what a fun episode this is yeah no <laughs> i mean like it's amazing like these guys lebron um, you know i have not treated lebron but uh, um, you know the, the agent and we have some common clients spends I'm, i'm maybe quoting wrong or wrong minimum of 2 million dollars a year on his regenerative stuff because the guy still can keep up with the rookies that are 18 year olds right now and he's pushing 40 it's amazing he's playing with his, his, his own son at the same time mm. how many athletes have that much longevity yeah to give yeah. the audience context because a lot of indian audiences do not watch nba LeBron James is 1984 born which means he's 40 years old. Yeah. But he's still playing like one of the top 10 guys. Absolutely. And yeah. he's been the number one guy for the majority of the last 15 years. This is the end of his career but he's still in the top still, 10 players. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You yeah. remember in like 2005ish Sachin Tendulkar had also got a tennis elbow? Yeah, the I I heard and uh, he went to I think at the time to England and got he, the injection done. He had got uh, a uh, stem cell therapy i have n i'm not sure uh, what he got but uh, injection means it's got to be either prp or stem cell uh, at, at that point i'm sure he's uh, he's had other injuries as well uh, but uh, usually when you go outside and get an injection you don't go and get a steroid injection in a different country you usually get one of these two mm. yeah so he must yeah. have got perhaps PRP back in 2005ish at that point yeah 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 if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip